Hello, everyone, and welcome into another Front Office Sports Live event. I'm Adam White, CEO of FOS, and want to welcome you to today's conversation on how to accelerate your career in the sports industry presented by our friends at the University of Miami. We've got a great discussion ahead for you today, so we're going to jump right in. Uh, the rapidly changing sports industry landscape is presenting new and exciting career opportunities like never before. Rising above the rest of the talent pool is key to landing your dream job. In today's event, we'll discuss some of the changes and how aspiring young professionals can gain advantages in the field throughout education and networking. Thrilled to have with me today two faculty members and an alum of the program with us today. We'd love for each of you to introduce yourself and share a little bit of your background. Warren, I'll turn it over to you first. All right. Hi. Welcome. Uh, my name is Warren Wisnett. I've been at the University of Miami for 17 years now. Uh, prior to getting into academia, uh, I was uh, involved in sports with both the KFC and Frito-Lay. I was uh, in charge of uh, customer relations and hospitality at the Indy 500 and the Kentucky Derby and several universities. So uh, my background uh, really is not with the teams, but from the other side of the table as uh, one of the sponsors for a lot of events. Awesome. Excited to have you and appreciate you joining us. Uh, Wendy, we'll toss over to you. Thanks, Adam. I'm Wendy Dees. Um, I'm a professor and I'm the graduate program director at the University of Miami. And I'm entering my 12th year at the U. And um, I teach courses on sport marketing and sport sponsorship in our U Online graduate program. And um, I also came from the industry before entering academia. So I was an account executive for Synergy Sports Marketing in Orlando. Um, so it was a full service agency that primarily focused on uh, supporting professional golf events uh, with their marketing, sponsorship, hospitality and event management. Um, so. Um, I also came from the sponsorship and sales side of the industry and really worked on the B2B side of things. Um, but my industry experience is also where my marketing and sponsorship expertise derived from. So really appreciate you guys having us and highlighting um, the program. So thanks. Awesome. Excited to have you. And uh, Ayla, over to you. Hi, yeah, thanks for having me. Uh, Ayla Acosta, I am currently an account services executive with the Arizona Diamondbacks. Uh, also a front office sports uh, rising 25 winner from 2020. And I graduated from the University of Miami with the sports administration uh, master's program in 2019. So kind of a whirlwind of experience and um, continuing to just keep moving, but happy to be here and share my experience. Awesome. Well, excited to have all of you and thanks for thanks for jumping on for this quick conversation. So, you know, I'm going to turn this over to Warren and Wendy to start, but how has the master's program evolved over the years to address some of the shifts in the industry? Like, what are some of the new skills that are most important for students to learn if they want to excel now? Well, I can, I'll get started. Um, I think one of the, the areas that a lot of people didn't expect is um, being able to work remotely uh, online. Uh, when we started the program, COVID wasn't here, and you know it was a new experience for people to work online. and And uh, I think uh, uh, being focused the way we are uh, uh, with our a lot of projects, uh, people learn how to work remotely with people from all across, uh, not only the country but uh, in other countries as well. So I think uh, that's been a big part. And uh, the introduction of our globalization of sport uh, course has has been very important as well. Yeah, and I'll just I'll add on to that, Adam. Um, you know, I think two really important skills that we emphasize um, in our classes, and I know we'll probably get to industry networking and things outside the class a little later, but um, inside uh, the classroom, I think two really important skills that we've all been focusing on are um, one, problem solving, and two, the use of data. Um, so we know from the research that the number one skill that employers are looking for today, not just in sport management, but across the board is, you know, employees to come in and be able to problem solve. And so, you know, we really focus all of our discussions and our assignments and our projects on students learning how to take industry problems and issues and challenges and, you know, really focus on, um, you know, how to solve those. And then the second thing we do is we have our students always using 
um, real industry data. Um, you know, you know this, Adam, that all sport organizations now are making decisions, maybe not entirely based on data, but very largely based on data. And we want our students to have a lot of comfort in collecting or analyzing data and making business decisions or informing their marketing strategy with data. So for instance, in my classes, I teach marketing and sponsorship. And one of their main projects is they get in uh, sales teams and create a presentation to pitch a new or a prospective sponsor for a professional sports team. And, you know, I use my industry contacts to get an actual sponsorship deck with 10 or 15 pages of real data from a sport organization uh, for my students to use um, to create those pitch presentations. So they're problem solving, um, they're learning how to become, you know, critical and creative thinkers. Um, they're using using actual data that teams also use um, on their uh, sales side. So I think it's really important for students to get that problem solving and that that data experience. And then they can go straight to the interview table and say, you know, I've developed these skills, um, but I've also done the actual job requirement that you're asking for in this position. So I think that's really important. Awesome. And Ayla, is that what you took to the interview table after your time at Miami? Exactly what Dr. D's laid out? Yes, exactly. <laughs> it was actually really cool because a lot of what I learned in her class was similar to what I was doing at the time. Um, during that program, I was working in minor league baseball uh, in sponsorship as well. So it was cool to kind of see all that come together in real life in real time. When it came to a master's program, Ayla, and this, I'll go back to you, right? Like, what do you feel like separated UM or, or what drew you to it? Obviously, you were already working in the, the industry. Like, why did you feel like you had to go back and, and take the educational side of your career to another level? Yeah. Um, I mean, when I first had found this program, I was just super excited to be associated with the University of Miami. Um, you hear about Miami, you know, nationally, globally from you know, the sports field, but then also just from the education standpoint. Um, when I was, I think I was a, I'm a junior in college when I was starting to like really look at post-graduation programs. And I just knew I wanted to set myself apart from everyone else. And the way to do that was continuing my education. Uh, at the same time, I also really wanted to get straight into the career world and, you know, the workforce and start getting that experience. So this program allowed me to do that, to work hand in hand. Uh, so I was working full time in minor league baseball and doing a, a master's degree program in, in sports administration. So, uh, you know, it was, it was definitely an experience that taught me a lot of time management, but it was really cool to have it kind of, as I said, really just as I learned, it was applicable, immediately applicable. Um, but again, just University of Miami, just being a you know, really sports based school, it made sense to then learn the sports industry from the school. How did you manage? You know, I think that's the one thing what, when it comes to, um, you know, professional, continuing professional education, especially nowadays, we were talking earlier, Dr. Wisnett, about the idea of virtual and you guys being virtual. Also, school is a lot of that's put on virtual. So for you, Ayla, how did you manage, you know, working a full time job, also doing online education? Because I think that's one of the other hesitations when it comes to people who are looking into further education is being able to balance both what they're doing in their career and then also being able to try and take the next step. Yeah, I mean, I won't lie and say it was easy. It was definitely a, a challenge, but it was a really good productive challenge. Um, you know, in the, in the sports world, because it's so such a non-traditional employment, you have to be ready to work non-traditional hours, um, weekends sometimes. And this really set me up for that. Um, and so it's kind of funny whenever I finished the program, I had time, so to say, and so I felt really weird, whereas most people who might not have done both at the same time, like they're used to that constant workflow. Uh, so for me to be able to then graduate and then just focus on work, it was like, what do I do with all my time? <laughs> but to be able to do both, I think it's just you have to really think about your time management. Um, I, I actually spent a lot of nights uh, when I was working a game. Whenever I had a little bit of downtime, I would like run up to a suite or um, we had an auxiliary locker room or I might walk back up to my office and do my papers or 
respond to blog posts. Um, so it's really like a simultaneous sort of thing. And But I always challenge myself to finish it before the weekend so I would have a little bit of breathe, like breathing room. Love it. Love it. Uh, we well, love to talk networking. I know we already hinted at that. And Dr. Dees, I'll probably toss it to you because you were the one who mentioned it. Obviously, uh, you know, one of the things that we've already been told, always been told, it's not all about what you know, it's about who you know. And obviously, I think we know it's a, it's a mix of both nowadays. But, you know, talk about the importance of building and leveraging one's own sports network and just, you know, take me through UM's uh, ability to help their students and their faculty and whoever else comes into the programs kind of uh, aura, the ability to kind of level up from that side of things. Yeah, so I'll say that probably two years before we even launched the U Online program, when the faculty were sitting and thinking about the design of this program, the number one goal for the U Online program was it uh, for it to mirror the on-campus graduate program as much as possible. So we wanted our students to have the same education and the same experience online with the modality being the only difference. So same curriculum, uh, same faculty, and most importantly, same engagement and same access as our campus students as much as possible. Um, because like you said, it's, you know, people say it's not what you know, it's who you know. And we like to say it's not who you know, it's who knows you. And the way that you do that is through volunteering and interning and networking. And we knew that those things were going to be critical for our U online students. And that would be the biggest challenge with the different modality. Uh, but we were determined to give them, you know, the same top quality education and experience. And so the way we do that with our U online program to help our students with their virtual, you know, networking and their access to the industry is, um, you know, our students have, um, industry uh, executives um, interviews embedded in every single one of their classes. Um, so the content and the media pieces that they're watching in class, um, a lot of times they're not us, they're industry experts um, that are giving, um, you know, kind of small lectures in their classes. Um, our U online students um, have been coming to our sport industry conference on campus, you know, every spring. Um, for the last four or five years, we've offered scholarships um, to get our students there. Um, you know, they also have every option to come on campus and participate in anything that our campus students do. So they've come for orientation, for graduation. Um, we've had football tailgates uh, with our U online students there. Um, but the other thing is every time we create an industry partnership, which is what our program is known for, all of our contacts in Miami and then, um, you know, domestically and globally, the first thing we ask our partners is, you know, how can our U online students get involved with this? So they have the same access to internships, study abroad programs. You know, we always, you know, make sure that our partnerships have that component um, where the U online students can get involved. So they have 100% access to our, you know, U Miami global network. Um, and, you know, we're really proud of that. And that's very important to us. Yeah, I th uh, I, to just add on to that, um, as Wendy said, I mean, it was absolutely critical to us that the same faculty that teach on campus teach the online classes. And we've been able to, to maintain that and, um, our, we have a full-time internship coordinator, Paul Resnick, who's also available. Uh, and uh, when possible, we've we've done everything we can to help the online st students uh, get interns in their internships in their areas. How's the alumni network helped? And I know Ayla is probably more on your side of things, but would love to get an understanding of you know activating. I think Dr. Dee, you mentioned this earlier. You know the tailgates and everything like that. But take me through the alumni network experiences. It's not only just like who you know and who knows you externally, but also internally, obviously. And as you guys have built out the program, I'm assuming that alumni network now reaches far and wide. But would love to get you know any anecdotal evidence from you, Ayla, around the alumni network, and then from you know Dr. Dee's just broadly around uh, you know how you guys have cultivated the alumni network and any notable alumni that you can kind of lean on yeah uh, from my side it's there's that theory that we're all connected by six degrees of separation uh, but when it comes to sports world I swear it drops to like three degrees maybe two yeah right it's such a fun and like small tight-knit community but also very large and expanse 
Um, and so when I talk about University of Miami and that I went there or graduated from there and so on and so forth, a lot of people are like, oh, do you know so-and-so or do you know so-and-so? I'm like, yep, I sure do. I sure do. Or like I had class with them or he or she was my professor. Um, I get a lot asking about Paul Resnick. So it's funny, Warren, that you brought him up again. <laughs> but I swear Paul knows everyone. Uh, but it, it's it's so beneficial to have those connections because even if you don't think someone knows who you're trying to get in touch with, ask. Because chances are, if they don't, they know someone else who does. Um, so I guess like, for example, when I was applying here at the Diamondbacks, um, one of my friends who she's actually from Miami too. Um, so it worked out really well, but she connected me with someone who then knew someone working within this department. And it worked out really well, like trying to create that connection and just really get a good inside feel for the organization. Um, so yeah, it, it's just, it, you have to like really touch on that and to really just connect with people, continue to use those networks, continue to build it. Um, programs such as this, they're only gonna expand your network tenfold um, and then just continue compounding on top of that. I'll just add on to that. I think another one of the important aspects about our program that you know we make a concerted effort to do is you know have our faculty available. So you know one thing that I think uh, online students worry about, um, especially when they're investing in a graduate degree, is am I going to do this online program and feel like I'm on an island? You know, am I going to feel like I'm just at home studying by myself? and you know left to deal with my own technical issues or my own networking or whatever the case may be and so you know we try to make sure that the students have access not just to professor resnick who you know does all of our internships and our community partnerships but you know every single faculty tries to make themselves available either you know on their cell phone through zoom whatever the case may be because each of us has our own individual you know, network as well, because every single faculty member has worked in the industry in their area, in addition to having their terminal degree. And so, you know, students may want to connect with their individual professor and access their network in their area to get where they need to go. I've been on so many cell phone calls or Zoom calls where I ask students, you know, what is it exactly that you're wanting to do? And once they tell me, I'm like, hey, you know, I know someone here or there. Um, I've had students that are living in different states and I picked up the phone and called someone at a team or at a collegiate athletic department in their state and said, hey, you know, if this student drives to you, can they come volunteer or intern? And they're like, sure, absolutely, send them my way. So I think it's not only our network through Professor Resnick, our network through our sport industry conference where we bring sport executives from all over the world. It's every professor's individual network in their area of expertise if students want to follow that path. And just knowing that when you need someone to help connect you to the industry, there's someone there to pick up the phone or get on Zoom and make that call for you or vouch for you that you're a great new online student and that they should hire you. And without that personal connection in an online program, I think you would be on an island, but that doesn't happen here. Yeah, and to add to that too, uh, a lot of people think if you're going into an online program, you're gonna be in with 200 people and you're just like, and just lost. Uh, all of our classes are limited in size intentionally to make sure that uh, we can have that one-on-one -on -one connection. Love it. Yeah. One on one connection, obviously, is extremely important, whether it's a virtual or non virtual world. So hopefully as we get back to a mostly non virtual world, it'll continue to be that way. I uh, would love to have you both and all actually talk about some advice to differentiate, differentiate yourselves from the rest of the pack. Obviously, I think one of the ways and we've touched on it already is, you know, the postgraduate degree or the graduate degree and the opportunity to expand your, you know, your practical knowledge as you expand your uh, career knowledge. But you know, Ayla would love to talk about, you know, some of the skills that you learned. I know you touched on a little bit earlier, but any of the other ones that you feel are applicable, not only to what your past role was that when you were when you were taking this program, but your current role and then also future. And then Wendy and Warren would love to have your just, you know, obviously you've been in the industry for quite some time. Your overarching advice for those who are either thinking about the program, thinking about a graduate degree or just in general, how to stand out. So I would say if you're thinking about doing it, you need to do it. 
uh, because both fortunately and fortunately, the sports industry is extremely competitive. So, you know, you want to do anything and everything you can to differentiate yourself. And one of the best ways to do that is by continuing your education, um, especially with a program such as University of Miami that's so highly ranked, you know, not just nationally, but globally. Um, you know, you're, be, you're able to expand your network, you're able to learn everything. Um, you know, it's, it's really very well rounded in what we're learning throughout the program because you're not just learning about um, sponsorships or marketing or accounting or, you know, this, you're learning about everything. Uh, you're learning about sports law. You're learning how to um, gain funding to build a, um, a new stadium. Um, one thing that really clicked for me actually yesterday, uh, so I'm still kind of onboarding here um, at, at the Diamondbacks and I had to sit down and go through a um, just like a, a law learning lesson. Um, just to see how we we do that here. And every terminology they talked about from contracts to sports to players, like I learned that at, <laughs> in the program. And it was so cool to be like, oh, I know what you're talking about. I know what you're talking about. Um, so to have like that basic concept level to then go out and hold these conversations with people within your organization. And honestly, it's like, it's just a huge amount of respect for others who are, you know, might need a different department from you. Um, so to be able to have that knowledge and whether you want to go into accounting or you want to go into sports law or player development, whatever, you're able to have some sort of basic knowledge. And then it makes you more well-rounded. It makes you stand out a lot more. Um, and you're just able to, again, differentiate yourself through your education. Yeah, I think uh, a key thing is that being a cohort program, you're with a group for about a year and a half. You never know who's going to be in that group with you. Uh, it, we just recently had uh, a lady graduate uh, who's the uh, number two person of D1 school, uh, this executive, uh, number two person in athletics. We have um, uh, an, a financial agent from Brazil who has international uh, athletes and international connections. Uh, uh, administrative assistant with the Philadelphia Eagles was one of our students. So you never know who's gonna be a part of that class that uh, gives you the opportunity to make connections on your own uh, with people that are currently in the industry at different levels. And I think Adam can probably relate to this a little bit, but um, you know, like I said before, every single uh, activity or assignment or project that's embedded in our classes has some type of industry component on purpose because we want to get our online students connected to the industry as much as possible. So rather than us just teaching or lecturing and then having students, you know, memorize things and take tests, um, you know, we try to force our students to get involved in the industry at every turn. And so Every project gives students an opportunity to reach out to someone uh, in the industry, uh, conduct an informational interview, um, contact them to get information or data for a project. And, um, you know, I think Adam knows how important those informational interviews are or, you know, having that assignment that requires you to attend a game, go to a networking uh, event, you know, do, do a certain amount of hours, see something physically in the industry in order to evaluate and complete a project. And I think as soon as you make that first really authentic connection in the industry and you realize that those executives are willing, um, you know, to help you and get you involved and get you connected even further, it kind of lights, you know, a fire to, to build an even bigger, you know, network, whether that's in person or virtually. Um, and, you know, we do that as much as possible because, you know, we want our students to, uh, you know, not only they're going to they're going to start their network within their own class, obviously, but then we want it to, you know, grow exponentially from there. And then, like Ayla said, um, the sports world is actually way smaller than you think it is. And that network will take off very fast with the first few good connections. So, um, you know, I think our students realize that we make the effort to help them with that. Um, and they end up in places like Ayla. 
Yeah, not a bad place in Arizona as a <laughs> Arizona resident myself, former Arizona resident, I guess I say myself. Well, would love, you know, with the few minutes we have left, obviously there's a lot going on in the sports industry. Would love to get just each of your own take on some of the things that you're watching from a high level, potentially some of the things you may be incorporating, specifically Ayla into your job or, you know, Wendy and Warren into your classes. But, you know, we have about five minutes left here. So we'd love to kind of just go through what you're watching, what you're paying attention to, and maybe what people who are watching this, even if they're not going into a postgraduate or graduate degree program, should be paying attention to. So uh, Warren, I'll start with you. Uh, I would say esports uh, is a huge uh, area that uh, is growing. There's so many different uh, components of it, whether it's uh, something with Riot Games or if it's uh, by a sports team. Uh, we're actively involved with uh, in that area right now, learning more. And, and uh, I think uh, that's an area that's going to have a tremendous amount of growth available to a lot of people. Hey, I'll turn, I'll turn to you. I would say just because it's really re relevant right now uh, here in Arizona, sports betting um, just became legal here this past week. So uh, I think that's really actually closely related to esports and anything that's digital. And you even talk about the pandemic that happened and heaven forbid it happens again. You know, how do you pivot and you bring all these things together between esports and sports betting and marketing, and all these things. Um, something I've always been told is to hire someone who's smarter than you. And so a lot of these like esports and sports betting and things like that, that's who I'm looking for whenever we're looking for interns or new hires. You know, I'm looking for someone who has more knowledge than I do, honestly. So have you placed a sports bet yet? Are you allowed to I, tell us if you have? I have not. <laughs> <laughs> Dang it. Almost one time. Uh Wendy, how about you? <laughs> Don't get her fired in the very beginning of the new nah, job. No, I would <laughs> never. I would never. Come on. You got to test the product. The Caesars or whoever is uh, is a big partner of the Dimebacks. It's Caesars, right, I think? Uh, uh, Gila River. Gila River, excuse me. Yeah. Gila River, yeah. And Caesars, yeah. Yeah, well, I'll just add on uh, to that since I'm headed here in a few weeks to the Sport Marketing Association conference out in, in Vegas. Um, the research I, that I'm presenting is on um, two areas that I think are huge right now and, and going to be bigger later on. Um, looking at NFTs um, in the sports world and kind of where that's going. And I know that's really in, a, in its infancy, but, you know, a revenue stream that I think all sport organizations are trying to figure out how to dip their toe into. Um, and then since I'm a sponsorship researcher, I'm always looking at what new revenue streams are, are happening on that side of things. Um, and, you know, we've got a study where we're looking at consumers' uh, perceptions of sports teams that have CBD sponsors. So that's another area. It's kind of like what you guys mentioned with sports betting. That was, you know, um, that was a touchy subject for a long time before the repeal of PASPA. And now it's like gates wide open and everyone's, you know, uh, jumping on sports betting and everyone's fine with that now. And CBD is lacking uh, lagging a little bit behind, but I think that's the next big growth area in terms of, of sponsorship revenue. Um, but teams and leagues are kind of dipping their toe in, in that pond a lot more slowly. Um, but, you know, certainly um, athletes are, are getting involved in that and there are already, you know, athletes that are brand ambassadors for CBD brands. And um, so I think everything that we mentioned here are areas that students need to keep their eye on. I always tell my students, if you want to get a job in the sports industry and it's extremely competitive, you need to keep your eye on growth areas because growth areas are where the jobs are. So we're talking about these areas in our classes, not just because they're important to the business, um, but that's where those doors are going to open to get your foot in the sport industry. Love it. We have two minutes left. Would love your best one liner from a career advice standpoint. So we'll go around the horn again. Uh, Ayla, we'll start with you. Oh, I knew you were going to start with me. <laughs> <laughs> it's um, like you're a rising 25 winner and you know how this all works. Who would? Oh, I know. <laughs> Gosh. Um, I would say my, my best piece of advice is keep learning and really to expand on that. It, it means whether it's postgraduate or keeping up with day-to-day -day news or, you know, as Dr. Deese just spoke about, you know, growing industries, keep learning. Love it. Dr. Wisnett? 
Uh, I would say uh, never uh, uh, underestimate the people you're with because you may need them down the road and your paths may cross uh, in places where you never expected uh, in many years later. So Love it. always, always be good. That's it. And Dr. D's to finish us out. Um, I think since we're uh, moving into the massive NIL era, um, I would say start building your personal brand early and work on it often. Awesome. Well, I appreciate it. I think that's a great way to end and a great way to finish. So really want to thank everyone, all of you for joining us today. Uh, for those who are tuning in, uh, if you want to learn more about the University of Miami's online master's in sports administration program, you can speak with an enrollment advisor at any time by visiting youonline.miami.edu. Uh, and I just want to say thank you all again for, for joining us and have a great day. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Adam.